Hello beautiful beings and welcome to the new spin. So this is a Galactic Mayan Astrology Report for the 3rd of February 2023 and we're moving into a whole new cycle of human being evolution. So just before we begin I want to share with you that I went on a really magical mission. I'm going to share a video about it when I have the capacity and I mentioned it briefly in the last wave spell video. I was guided by some really powerful crystals to begin to make elixirs using some very sacred water from Ilkley Moors, which is a really, yeah, it's very ancient land, very, very ancient land. And I carried the water across the moorland to a stone circle. And then inside the stone circle, I was guided, I've got like a Lemurian Ankh, which is a tuning fork too. And I was guided to tune the frequency after opening my connection with my starry guides. I was guided to, to attune the waters and the crystals and the stones together. Really, really powerful. And then I used the stones, the crystals, once I got home. I then created, let's let them sit in spring water so that they then charged this spring water and then combined that with some filtered water that's charged with Sekem to create these really powerful elixirs now. You know, we know that water is programmed by us, by, it's programmed by intention, you know, it's a carrier of frequency and the three crystals that I've utilised one is an Andara crystal, which is a direct link to Lemuria. Another is the Sintamani stone, which has been used by all of the great leaders of humanity. It's a piece of an asteroid from Sirius and it's very galactic. And then also the Boji stones, which again were created around the same time that the planet was created. And they bring this like masculine and feminine Kundalini energy. So yeah, the crystals really want to be, for their frequency to be joining with our frequency now through our DNA and they really are, yeah, inviting us to, to reconnect to these really deep threads of, of what it is to be a human, particularly for this time on the planet. And it's said that there are like certain stones, certain crystals that hold these like programs of potential for humanity. And it's my personal feeling that all three of these crystals have that. So I've created these elixirs, I've created a new Etsy shop. Like in the past week, I've just had this crazy birthing. And you know, I've sort of sat at the end of the birthing feeling quite exhausted. And you know, there's a part of me that struggles with that. And this leads quite nicely into the energy of the wave spell. I'm gonna link my shop below, by the way, um, to have a little look at that. And it leads quite nicely into the energy of the wave spell that begins the whole process. So the red dragon archetype, which is what I am, is all about birthing. It's the first of the 20 archetypes. And before I kind of share more about that, what I will say is for the first 13 days of our 260 day cycle, we get to like the code of what we're gonna be working with personally for the coming spin, the human evolution spin, is revealed to us. So there are two ways of working with this modality and this is why I create the diary. Again, I'll link that below if you haven't got your copy and you want one. Because we can use the calendar to look at what's coming into our reality and utilise the archetype of the time to be like, okay, what's the teaching? If the archetype that's governing this time has got these particular qualities, then looking through that frame, we can read the reality around us to receive the teachings that are appropriate for us. And simultaneously, we can look at the archetype of the time, of the moment, of the 13 days and be like, okay, that's the archetype. So therefore I'm gonna take this action or I'm gonna lean into this thing because this is the time to do it because I'm supported by the archetype. So in these first 13 days, 
as I say, the codes that we personally, each one of us personally, is going to be working with for the coming 13, like the, sorry, the coming wave spells of the entire year, it, are revealed to us. So notice not only the content, like who comes in, what comes in, it's more about how it feels for those things to be in our lives and the growth edges that are being presented to us. So how are we reacting to what's coming in? And essentially, you know, how, how heart-centered can we be in that? So that's kind of before we even look at the red dragon. But the red dragon is about birthing, it is about beginning. So this is a really good time to be feeling into what you want to be calling in for the next 260 days. Like, where do you want to grow through? What do you want to evolve within yourself? And what do you want to create? You know, what do you want to birth on the planet? We're all here to birth. And <clears throat> we're here to birth together. And this is the thing that, you know, this, this idea that these nuclear families where you know, the woman births the child and then there's potentially the dad around to support and even that's only a potential. It's such a stark contrast to when we used to birth within community and within tribe. And that birthing framework is now carried over into all of our creations. And how can we support one another to birth? How can we, and this is something that I'm really feeling at the moment because I am a birther as a red dragon, I'm a creator and you know I've got all of the cosmic side of things that I do and then everything that I'm bringing in for children and it's a lot for one human to be holding and bringing through. But a nice noisy train at the side of me. So the inquiry is what do I want to birth? What do I want to bring in? during this 260 days and we can begin to, to see that we can begin to lean into that we can sort of set intentions we can maybe make little plans we don't have to birth something in those first 13 days during the wave spell but we can be feeling into what is the what do i want to be carrying for the next nine months what do i want to be bringing forward but then the next step is okay and what do I need to make that happen? What support do I need to call in to allow that? You know, so not only are we sort of setting the intention of what we wanted to create, we're also setting the intention and putting the call out for the support that we need to make that happen too. So that's one aspect of the red dragon. It's this birthing, it's this creation, you know, it's birthing a new aspect of who we are. It's birthing physical things in reality. You know, it's, it's all about the beginning and the birth and the start. But the other piece of Red Dragon, there's many pieces, but the other piece that I feel to bring to light right now is the kind of tagline of the Red Dragon archetype is making choices without guarantees. So it's really the time for us to be visioning and calling in and beginning to birth and feeling into what our births are and supporting one another and figuring out what support we need. But the other piece of it is that there's no guarantees that it's actually going to manifest and how do we get comfortable how do we trust reality because what comes in for us isn't necessarily what we want it's what we need how surrendered are we to that within our reality you know and this is the shadow point this is the growth edge for the red dragon archetype it's my fucking growth edge because nothing is guaranteed and you know there's a bigger picture that us as humans can't comprehend we cannot comprehend the vastness of what it is to evolve you know the way that evolution has always taken place on this planet is beyond our our conscious comprehension so what that means is we might get a, an image or a thing or a whatever that we're like yep yeah, this is what i want to birth this is what i want to create this is what i want to live but sometimes that thing is actually to get us to the next step that's more in alignment with where we're at and what we're bringing in. 
<laughs> that was funny. I just totally like, because I've been rinsing my phone with all of my Etsy pictures and stuff. <laughs> my phone just went like, full storage, no more. Just as my legs went dead, so it was actually quite a welcome, a welcome thing. So, <clears throat> yeah. The inquiry is, or the key, the key to the puzzle within this is, how how much trust can I cultivate in a bigger picture that I can't see? That's the essence of the red dragon. It's like, we get these visions, we want to birth, we're ready to birth, we're here to birth, new aspects of ourselves, new aspects of reality. You know, we're here to change the human game because that is the way of evolution. You know, it's not just about humanity. The way of evolution is to, you know, create more complex forms. So we are here to create more complex forms whilst also, allowing that loop to return into being natural beings you know and this is another really big aspect of the red dragon there's like a direct line to ancient awareness there's a direct line to the way that we used to exist on the planet and it's something that you know at this time again in these first 13 days spend time in nature to figure out the birthing how can an aspect of what you're calling in be about aligning with the original human, the primal human, the human that exists as part of the dirt that we are. And what comes with that when we are part of the earth is this innate trust. We're not like, oh my God, there's a massive storm that's come and I'm being punished for something. Oh, this new life that I'm creating hasn't taken. You know, when we're in alignment with nature, there's a surrender to natural order, there's a surrender to a bigger picture, and this is the edge that we really get to inhabit and explore. I thought that was my train, but it's not, it's going either way, I think. <laughs> so yeah, within the Red Dragon, as I say, we've got this piece of looking at reality and being like okay what's coming in because it's the first few days of the cycle figuring out what it is that we want to birth calling in also what we need to be able to birth but the biggest piece is surrendering and re just recognizing like where am i at in trust what do i need to do to create more trust how can i review what's already happened in my life and sort of gather the data that the egoic mind or our inner child and the aspects of us that were developed around the inner child to see that all these things that fell apart that didn't work actually took us closer to love because it's always love it's always love so it's about letting go of the reins and this is something that you know for, for red dragon people it's bonkers you know and i know a lot of red dragon people because our lives don't have this like we we don't know what the bloody hell's going to happen we don't know what's going to happen and you just like wake up in this completely different chapter of reality and it's like oh wow cool and obviously when you're doing your work there's a there's a sort of progression with that so yeah we get to this in this wave spell we don't know what's going to happen we can set our intentions but then we have to let go and let god and drop into that softness of like you know it's all going to be okay it's always okay and we're exactly where we need to be we do exactly what we need to be doing and we can co-create with existence but it is a co-creation and what that means is that the universe has got the bigger picture has got artistic license on how things come into form and if they come into form. But holding that intention in our heart of love is only going to take us where we want to go. So I'm excited to see what our community brings into form in the coming 260 days because when I say our community, what I'm referencing are the, like, the heart warriors they're people that are like in devotion to evolution and creation and have got the ability to to say yes to whatever wants to happen through us and as i say you know i've kind of created these new 
tools to support you know and it feels really wonderful to have kind of gone through another creation portal and to be crafting again I had a reading and I'm going to share more when I actually do the video about how all of this came to pass but it was phenomenal in sort of reconnecting me to like a skill that I've got from another another aspect of space and time when it comes to working with water and working with the crystal kingdom so yeah check out my Etsy shop if you haven't got your diary grab your diary and start this this cycle as you mean to go on in deep devotion in surrender and let's fucking light up the earth plane let's do what we came here to do let's build the shit let's do it together because the reality that we know that we've already experienced and that we continue to experience you know it's so not dead like so not on that vibe of like oh the earth, this existence is suffering it's like well yeah but no this existence is actually fucking sick like look at the natural world look at the beauty you know to experience sensation is incredible to love one another is incredible and even in the face of the necessary edges of evolutionary pain when we're fucking sprouting wings or feet when we've only been fucking fish before there's this beautiful freedom every step of the way it's like we unlock more freedom we unlock more freedom we unlock more freedom and with that freedom comes the comes the ability to recognize more love and more beauty and what an incredible opportunity is to be on the planet at this time and to be the people that are going through that portal that are carrying you know this code of like the fear to the love doing it together you know and like every time that I reconnect with somebody that I've known from other times it's like we're, we're here together and it's so fucking special so I hope that this spin is all that you want it to be and more I know that you are going to be lovingly taken we all are to exactly where we need to be exactly the right moments but our practice is about how we can trust and surrender to that and recognize you know we don't need to hold so tightly on the wheel the car's driving itself show up do the thing take care of the human vessel on all levels but then what's going to come is going to come leaning into the inspiration for the birthing but once we're pregnant doing its thing we look after the vessel but the thing is growing inside us that little being and at the perfect moment it's burst out into the world but sometimes the soul contract that we have with these babies is for them not to actually incarnate and it's the same with all aspects of our creation like sometimes the contract is not what we think it is but it's what we need it to be and on the highest level on the deepest level it's always a loving contract because duality is an illusion so I send you such deep love and so much gratitude for tuning into this video and for connecting with not only the Mayan calendar but me as well it's beautiful to to feel that community support and I'm going to be dropping a video in a bit with all of the exciting developments about the alternative to school flipping egg want to get involved in that there's going to be lots of opportunity big love beautiful people